Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our stream that we have going today, Virtual Classrooms. Uh, Nick and Andrew are going to be on here in a minute. I'm Bill Casey. Uh, I run all the tech behind uh, IAFERD and what we're doing. Um, and what I, you could do is actually view this through our YouTube channel, which some of you are on right now. Uh, you could also be viewing this possibly through our membership portal. Uh, which we now have free memberships. Uh, you'll see that we do have some free resources that are there for a free membership. Uh, a premium or paid membership will also get you other things. In the future, we're hoping to have videos each and every week uh, with newer content. If you go in that membership portal, create an account, you'll see some of the content that is in there under the webinar section. We have some other exciting things coming up in the future as well. Uh, we hope every Thursday that we do have some new content that we could provide to you. Uh, so that it would be helpful to you, for you during this school year. We'll also be having some professional development hour things that will be for our um, premium and paid members that will be coming up in the future. So a lot of these webinars, you'll be able to get your PDHs just by watching these videos, and um, it'll all go directly into your membership portal so that it'll be easy access to fill out those surveys and find those things. Perfect timing. Of course, there's going to be a phone call. So, <laughs> with that being said, uh, let's get back to uh, let's get right into our actual presentation with Nick and Andrew. Go ahead, guys. Why don't you get started? All right. Thank you, Bill. Um, first, before we start, a big shout out to Bill. He he worked really hard to set this up for us. So, huge thank you to him. Without him, this would been a lot tougher than it, than it was. So, um, so welcome. Uh, what Nick and I have kind of tried to do is just come up with some tips and things for that will help you make it easy as possible to create your own virtual class. Um, so, uh, what we want to do first is do a little, little get to know you. So, a little bit about me. Um, I'm starting my 15th year of teaching. They've all been in the Painted Key School District 111. It's about an hour south of Chicago, right on, I, right on Interstate 57. Um, I've taught kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, married, with, married with Shauna with three kids. Uh, Brady's 12, Bella's 10, Ben is 6, which is right there. Um, huge Cubs fan, so 12 to 3, so they're doing starting the year all right. Um, Bears fan too, and um, we recently became a cat family, which I never thought we would. But um, her name is Arya. So that's just a little bit about me. and. I'm going to turn it over to Nick, and he's going to do a little bit about himself. So I'm going to unshare this and get going. All right. Uh, I'm going to get into here, and I'll share a little bit about myself. Um, Nick Brockmeyer is my name. Uh, I've been this is my 17th year of teaching. I started out in special education um, in Omaha, Nebraska. I did a year of special ed here in Illinois and then um, became very lucky and a elementary PE position came open and that was my first love coming out of school. Um, so I hopped on board and um, was, had been teaching now for, teaching PE now for uh, 10 years. Um, I am married with two kids. Uh, my wife, Erica Dawson is 15 and Sutton is eight. And we are a pet loving family. As you can see, we have our little fur babies down there in the corner. Um, and then anybody that knows me, I'm always gonna have something Nebraska, um, either wearing something Nebraska or uh, a hat or something because that's my true love. Um, grew up in Nebraska, so I'm a Husker fan at heart. Um, and that's kind of, those, those are some of my loves and about me. So, um, a couple things that Andrew and I want you to walk away with today, <clears throat> um, is just a better understanding of what a virtual classroom is and how to build it. Um, we're going to try to keep things real simple, um, in hopes that you are able to take what we say or show you and then adapt it to, to what fits for you. Uh, we want you to walk away with how to link items in your classroom um, out into the virtual world. And then we want to show you how to, or how we share our virtual classrooms with our students and parents. 
Um, those are those are some of the things that we want you to walk away with after today. So um, we want to start off by showing you just a few examples of what a virtual classroom could look like. So this, of course, comes from the, the one and only um, Captain Pete. Um, this is his virtual classroom. Uh, it's, you know, uh, very appealing on the eyes. It's, it pops the color, all the visuals and everything like that. So that's one one option of an example. Here's another one. This is from Dual Hutchinson. Um, this is what he um, he made for his virtual classroom. There's lots of different equipment in there and uh, a lot of visuals for the kids. And then our last example here um, shows a lot of equipment and a lot of options. And there's a sign on there that says, click and explore everything here will take you to an activity or a resource. So that's kind of the idea and the, the point behind a virtual classroom is um, to take students uh, basically on a journey throughout the internet and throughout resources that you have that you want to push out to them. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take you from, from scratch and what you could do in order to build your virtual classroom. So I'm going to kind of show you what I did when I first made mine and then kind of show you some tools that I used along the way to help it look kind of more appealing um, for the students and for the parents. So Andrew and I both use Google Slides. Um, if, if you don't use Google Slides, I highly recommend it. Um, it's kind of where everybody in our profession is going and, and has been doing for a while just because of the share factor. Um, you, can, you can share it out super easy to colleagues, to parents, and to students. So, um, the first thing you want to do is you want to put a background on your on your Google slide. Um, I suggest using your own gym if possible. If you have a nice picture of your own gym, I suggest doing that. Um, that way your own students can relate to seeing that space and um, being in that space. When I made mine, I, I used a picture of my own gym. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can Go onto the internet and you can just do a Google search and maybe you'll find a gymnasium that works for you. Or I'm going to show you um, where you can go. Uh, one of my favorite uh, resources is CBHPE. Um, this is a, a big plug. Those of you that are PE teachers, if you have not gone here, if you have not been to this website, please go. Please visit this website. Uh, Mark and Becky Fulmer do an amazing job with this website and pushing out resources for the phys ed community. So um, where I would go, if it's me looking for um, a gym template, basically, to put on the background, I'm going to go to the template section uh, right here on CBHPE. And then they just recently put in a search item. And so I'm just going to type in gym. And the very first search item that comes up is a gym filled layout template. So I'm going to click on that. And then what that does is that's going to open up um, a Google Slides presentation of a bunch of different templates that you can use, that you can copy. And Becky's done a good job of laying it out and giving directions on what you can do too. So this template is actually um, my gym at my school. Um, so I am going to uh, take this. No, I'm not going to. Actually, I'm going to show you something else. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but you can take this template and you can put that down as your background um, for, for your virtual classroom. But I am going to show you how I did mine. So I'm going to go to background. Um, I'm going to choose an image. And this is something that I've already downloaded already from my uh, Google Drive. <clears throat> and this is just a picture that I took before our school opened. And um, so now I have my background. Now I have my background for my virtual classroom and I can start putting in, um, I can start putting in images or, or putting in equipment. So I'm gonna start off with actually my little Bitmoji character. 
Um, if you don't have a Google extension, you can still use your Bitmoji character, um, but I find it really easy to, to use the Chrome extension uh, Bitmoji. Um, and here's a tip as well. When you use your Bitmoji, if you just want your character and no words or anything like that, you can type in the search pose and it's gonna give you a bunch of different poses that you can use. So I like this one right here. If you click on it, it's gonna tell you to right click and copy the image. So you can do that. You can right click, copy image, or I just like to drag and drop it straight into my presentation. And there I am welcoming the students. I can resize it to whatever I need, okay? So that's kind of my first step. That's what I like to do uh, before I start adding anything else. Um, I'm gonna back up just a little bit and I am gonna show you just in case there's any um, classroom teachers on here uh, that aren't, that don't teach PE. If you want a classroom background, um, there is in Teacher Pay Teacher, there are some free uh, virtual backgrounds that you can download. It'll go straight into your Google Drive. All I did was type in Bitmoji virtual classroom template and I did a search. And this very first one that comes up, my teaching sped is my jam. Um, by clicking on that, it's going to add it directly into your Google Drive. So over here under free resources, you can add to Google Drive. I'm going to bring up my account. And then you just have to wait just a moment and it adds it into your Google Drive. And then what's going to happen is it's going to bring up a slideshow of backgrounds that somebody has already made for you that you can change and fit for your own for your own classroom for your students. Excuse my internet connection, it's a little slow here, but these are all, everything in here you can change. You can delete, you can add, you can get rid of this beanbag chair if you want to. Um, but let's say I want, let's see, I really like the way this one looks. So I'm going to, um, let's see, I want to, I'm gonna make a copy of the selected slide. I'm going to rename it. And then it's going to go, then it's going to open up a new uh, Google slide presentation of just that classroom that I liked. And then I can start changing that. I can start manipulating things around um, to what to what fits me and for my learning. Okay. Now that's, you know, that's for if you're a classroom teacher or even some PE teachers that are going to be in the classroom if you want to make it, um, if you want to make it fit for your, for your learning, okay? I'm going to go back to, to my gym, all right? Um, so I dragged and dropped my Bitmoji in there. Um, now I want to... I want to add equipment in there for um, for students to to see. So I want to make it look like my gym. So I'm going to go back to the gym and field layout slides. And that remember, I got this from the CBHPE website, and they've done a wonderful job of providing pictures of equipment for uh, for the students to use or for us to use in our virtual classroom. You can really click on anything and add anything in there. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to click on this parachute. I'm going to right click and click copy. And I get to go to my, back to my classroom and I'm going to paste that in into my classroom. Okay, so now I have a parachute. I have a parachute in there. Now, let's say I want the students to be able to click on this while they're at home and they're learning at home. I want them to be able to click on this and learn about um, 
parachute activities. Now I did this last spring and I encouraged um, family involvement. And so instead of a parachute, because most kids don't have a parachute at home, I had them use like a bed sheet or a pillowcase or something like that uh, because I wanted family involvement with this activity. So I'm going to go out into the internet and forgive me, I, I'm just going to type in parachute activities. And here's a list of parachute games and activities. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to copy the address, go back to my presentation. And what I do here is I'm used to doing this. So I hit control K. I'm sorry, I'm going to back up. I want to make sure that my object is selected. Now, my bitmoji, I want to make sure my object, the parachute is selected. I'm going to hit control K. And if, sometimes that doesn't work. Um, I've ran into some problems where control K doesn't work for me. If that's the case, you're going to go to insert, and then you're going to go down here to link. Now, notice that that's not highlighted, and that's my fault because the object is not selected. All right. So I'm going to go back here. Now I can link that object. I'm going to paste in the website that I want the students to go to and click apply. Now, when students click on the parachute, so if the, if the students are seeing this and they click on the parachute, it's going to take them to the website that I want them to go to. Okay. A um, couple other couple other things that I want to talk about real quick. Um, a website that I use really often um, to make to make things pop is remove.bg. Okay, so I'm going to go to remove.eg. Now, this is any time that you upload an image, uh, let's say from, from Google, and you upload that image into your virtual classroom. And I'm just going to give you a real quick example here. The other night, I wanted a, an image of um, a Google Doc picture. Okay, so I'm putting this into my presentation, but it's got this checkered background, right? Um, to me, I, I don't like the way that that looks, all right? So I want to get rid of that checkered background. One, one way that you can do this is when you go to um, remove.bg, there we go, um, you're going to see upload image. Now, the cool thing about remove.bg is you can drag and drop the image into there. It's just quicker. It's less clicks. Um, so I'm going to take my that same image that I just had, that Google Doc image, and I'm going to drag it and drop it into remove.bg. Now it's working right now. It's getting rid of that background. Now this was kind of hard to see because a, a PNG document or image um, is going to have that checkered background. So it's all, it doesn't look like it, but it's already um, gotten rid of that background. Okay, It's just put a different checkered background in there. You don't need to worry about that. I'll see if I can find a different one in just a minute. So that's what I want. I want it that way. I'm going to click download. So it just downloads it again. And now I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to pull up from my downloads, put it in here. And now I have a transparent background Google Doc image. Okay, So anytime that you have something that you have a background with and you want to get rid of it, use remove.bg. And I'm going to show you one more example. And um, I did this at home. My kids were able to help me with it. So forgive, forgive me for the, <laughs> the quality and the, the weirdness of the picture, but... Um, I'm going to upload an image from my computer, and this was me standing, um, sorry, standing in front of a curtain that I have at home. Okay, so I'm going to insert this. Okay, I wanted, I tried to do an image of me, an actual picture of me, not my Bitmoji character. 
Um, so I stood in front of the curtain and I'm like, okay, well, I need to get rid of that curtain. So I go to remove.bg. Um, I'm going to go back so I can show you this. So I'm going to upload an image. I'm going to take that same picture that I just showed you of me standing in front of the curtain. Put it in here, and you're going to see that it gets rid of the background so fast and so easy. Okay, it's gone. Now I can download it again, and this is a downloaded version without the background. Go back to my class, and I'm going to drag and drop it in there, and now there I am without the background. Okay. Now my curtain just happened to be a greenish color, so it works really well with green screens. From what I have found with remove.bg is it really doesn't matter the background as long as it's a solid color, no matter what the color is. Um, I tried to do one with me sitting in a yellow chair and that didn't work out very good with the curtain and the chair. Um, but that is, that's a website that I use all the time just because it, it um, is so simple and so easy to use. And there's some other, there's some other aspects of remove.bg um, that you can do as well. You can edit. And the cool thing about the editing is, let's say I wanted to restore a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to click, I don't know if you can see it or not. I have a little window there. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, if I go to restore, let's say I wanted just a little bit of that curtain, I can change the brush size and I can bring that curtain back. I don't know why you would want to do that, but if something messed up, you can change and you can basically restore part of your image that you wanted to. And then you would just click download again. So there's a restore and an erase part that you can you can do. You gotta be careful with a brush if you are erasing because you could erase part of your body. Okay. Um, that's a, a big plug for me is the remove.bg. Um, it just works really, really well with um, making a virtual classroom. Um, some suggestions that I would make. I originally um, I originally made a virtual classroom and I had tons of stuff in there. Lots of equipment, lots of places that the kids can click. Um, but that was when we first started the shutdown last spring. And we really didn't know what we were doing. Um, I hope I'm not the only one that didn't know what we were doing. But um, I, I wanted to push out as much information as I could to the kids. Well, now this fall, um, with remote teaching, I'm going to step back and I'm going to keep things real simple. Um, maybe one or two links in a, a virtual classroom and that's it. Uh, I just think the less clicks, um, the less cl clicks, the most, the more successful a student's going to be. Uh, I just think that we want to not confuse the students, not to confuse the parents. Um, I just think that's going to be the best way, the best way for me to go. So um, that's, that's, Basically, my part of the presentation is I just have one slide and um, everything happens on my one slide. So Andrew is going to talk about what he does for his classroom. And it is going to look a little bit different than mine, but a lot of, uh, a lot of similar, um, similar things that you'll notice as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrew. I'm going to stop sharing. Let me get shared back up. Thank you, Nick. All right. Okay, like like Nick said, mine's a little bit different. Um, I was lucky enough to have a projector and a screen in my room, so I'm used to using Google Slides. So I kind of the reason I had mine as a lot of different slides instead of just one is I wanted to be as close to what they would experience in my school as possible. So I just want to take a quick example of what my actual classroom looks like. Um, it would start out with here. That's the actual the begin the front of my building. Here we'll go into a pre presentation mode. Um, 
So, and a, a thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is a website called Vocaroo where you can actually put in your voice, you can record your voice and put it into your presentation, especially those of us with kindergartners, first graders, second graders who have a tr trouble reading. It's a really, really good tool to use. So, um, so we'll do it just real quick, just to kind of show you how it works. They can click on it. Not sure if you guys could hear that, but it's basically me just saying this whole thing right here. So those kindergartners, first graders aren't struggling to read it. So what I do is I just, I have a link right here and I'll show you how to do that. It brings me to a school directory. Normally first thing kids will see when they come to the building. So they can either go to the gym, to get to know me like you just saw, or I actually, with the help of uh, Becky Fulmer, actually was able to create my own at-home website when this whole thing started. So, and again, I have another Vocaroo right here. It tells them exactly what they need to do. So they can click onto the gym. And when they come into me, they normally go straight to what I call their home base. And they have to do a warm-up before we start anything. So I'll just click on a quick warm-up. Another, again, Vocaroo, tell them, tell them the directions. They do it now here i have where i can go back to the warm-ups and again i'll show you how to do all this they can go back to this okay or they can click on me and actually go to the gym so again for me this is more of a how their actual pe class would look if they were actually in the gym so and then every single thing and i try to make it easy i try to make it get as many colors as i could to, so they know what they can click on so if they wanted to do something with dice, have a little game, it goes right to there. And okay, I still got I still got to add more Vocaroos to it. I just actually just discovered it probably a week or so ago. Um, so again, click back and go to the gym. They can do this. And this is set up as a more of an asynchronous approach to it. So as opposed to being live as a synchronous, this is more of an asynchronous. They can go on. They can choose the activity they want to do. I even have it to where they can do an exit ticket. And it kind of shows them exactly what the exit, exit ticket is. And they have a link to where they can go if they're kindergarten, first, second, third grade. So, all right. So that's kind of how my system is set up. It was, like I said, it's, and I got the idea along with wanting to mirror my actual school experience from the actual music teacher that I had. She kind of has the same thing with a lot of different slides. Okay, so here's a little example of what one I just did. I'm going to kind of go back and delete everything and start from scratch, kind of like Nick did. And actually, the way Nick links things, I actually did not realize you could do that. So thank you, Nick, to, for that. I always, I'll show you the way I did it, but I like Nick's way a lot better, a lot simpler. So I'll show you what I did, but like I said, I like Nick's way better. So I'm going to do it his way. All right, so same same thing with, I like to, like Nick said, I like to add my Bitmoji right away. Um, what I do is I've, instead of having the Google extension, I always just had my Bitmo, that Bitmoji app on my phone. I, cho I chose whatever pose I wanted to, and I just shared it with my Google Drive. That was the way I did it, but again, I kind of like Nick's way better too. So this is a learning experience for me as well. Um, so I have that, and there's also ways you can Insert with the shapes. You can always do call outs. Something nice, simple. And you can even move to where me being kind of a perfectionist and I kind of want the call out to be right by the face. So, and you could be just type anything you want. And again, I'll show you the Volcru and I would say that into the Volcru. Um, so that's just like Nick had. And with me, what I would do, I already have some slides on here that I use for my actual students that I've used in years past. So there's one I'm going to link right there. It's kind of a, a cup challenge. So what I what how I do it again, I'm I'm glad my virtual classroom and Nick's are, are so different. There's it just shows you there's not just one way to do any of this. It's like Nick said, it's the way you can adapt to yours and do what you want, do what you feel is best and what's easiest for you. So that worked out really well that our that we went about it a different way. The way I, I've always done it is going to insert image. And a lot of my images I already have in my Google Drive. 
So I will just go with these because I know they're not cups, but I know a lot of students probably don't have these low profile cones at home. So I figured, you know, I might have to do something that they have. And okay, solo cups are pretty, pretty easily accessible. So I have this here. And again, you can shape it any way you want, bigger or smaller. And I like Nick's idea of having almost the kind of less is more mentality when it comes to this, not to overwhelm the student. So I like that idea as well. Now I'm gonna show you the way I always linked it. And this is what, how it was taught to me. But again, I like Nick's better. What I did is I'd go back to insert. Instead of doing a link right here, I always did a shape and I put a shape over it. Again, this is a little more, has a little more steps to it. Now, once I have it there, I'd right click, I'd link. And I already had my slide here. It, it has an option right here to slides in the presentation. You can click on that. So, and click on that. Now, here, obviously, you have to make it so the box is not filled. So you go back up to the fill tab, go to transparent. And I always like to just keep everything transparent. So if I did that correctly, go back to presents. And again, if I'm going way too fast, please let me know. I should be able, okay. Oh, I know what I did. I didn't hit click apply. That's, that was the issue. Okay. I've done that plenty of times. There we go. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So just to make sure it works in here, should be able to click on that and it brings me right to the next slide. So now I also, I always like to have a, again, a go back if they want to do more. Um, let's see. Let's get out of here. Okay, so let's say I want to do a and and that's the that's that's the one thing why I like Nick's idea better. Sometimes I forget that I have that transparent and I go to move it. And that's the transparency and not the actual picture. That's another reason why I like Nick's better. Um, let's see. Let's say again you want to go out to a YouTube a YouTube video. Um, actually, just the same video that I I shared with my classes earlier earlier this week. Uh, we'll go insert image again, go to drive, scan a lot of mine are there. Go to basketballs. Okay. Another bitmoji. Get as small as I can. And so now what I would do is I'd want to link that. So I'd put another Another shape over it. And when I do this, I always like to keep the shape solid until I've linked it so I, so I know what I need to. So then I do here is go to YouTube. Okay, so Nice dunks here. Pause it, right click. You should be able to copy the video URL. Okay. Go back to the classroom, right click again, go to link. Okay. That's already there because I already clicked it here. So all you gotta do is just take that away and right click again and paste, apply. And we should be able to make it transparent. Now this should be able to bring up an outside link to, there we go. Okay. So I always like to, as many times as I can, I always like to remind the kids that Michael Jordan, not LeBron James is best basketball player in the world, but sometimes they look at me like who's Michael Jordan. So that's kind of interesting conversation to have with the kids. Um, and one other thing, and the majority of other stuff I do is, is what Nick was saying. But the one thing I like to do is so kids can't, so if they click on something wrong, it doesn't bring them to the next slide. I always like to put a, and again, you don't have to do this. This is just something I kind of thought of being a perfectionist. That way they don't 
click on something and it brings them to, and not necessarily the next slide is the slide I want them to go to, if that makes sense. I put a, just again, one of those, one of those shapes on there, right click it, and I will link it to this actual slide. So if they, if they click off of a picture, it's not bringing them to the next slide and kind of confusing them. So I'll click link and I'll keep it with slide one. Apply it. Going to right click. Nope. Excuse me. Going to the fill, making it transparent. Okay. And sometimes it'll mess up. So what you, what I always like to do is right click again, and you've already linked it, so you don't have to go back to that. But this order symbol right here, I always like to send it to the very back, so it's not covering up the links that you really want the kids to go to. So send it to back. That way it should be in the background. So no matter where I click, it's going to stay on that slide. Okay, so if I present it, okay, if I just click here, it's not going to do anything if the kids actually click out of it. So that was a, a big thing that I discovered that I really like if you have multiple slides. Um, again, like I said, everything else is pretty much right on par with what Nick was already talking about. And I did want to get into Vocaroo and show you kind of how that works. Because again, those of us who teach the younger kids, being able to have them hear your voice, I think is just huge. Even if with me, a lot of the kindergartners that I will be having this year have never met me, have never seen me. And those that have chosen strictly virtual, I want them at least to hear my voice. They can see a picture of me, but I want them to hear my voice as well. So what you can do, vocaroo.com. And it's you don't have to set up a account or anything. It's basically just there, okay? And it's here. You just click on it. You, you speak. So we're gonna do. Hello, friends. Welcome to Edison's gym. You can click on any picture, and it should bring you to a link. If you have any questions, please message me on our Google Classroom. Hit pause or hit stop. Now, if it wasn't what you wanted to do, this button right here, you can redo it. Um, if you if you got what you want, you can always listen to it beforehand. Uh, click right here, save and share. Um, I always like to download it. Should come right here. Now all you do is kind of what Nick was doing with his Bitmoji. You can just kind of slide it. Now I do it on my phone a lot too, and I just I share it into my Google Drive once it's downloaded. So let me get this up. So here should be able to slide that right up. Yeah, of course. Oh, now I know, I know what I need to be doing. Sorry about that. Actually, I got to, you have to, excuse me, you can't put it into the slide right away. You have to put it into a folder. And I already have a folder ready. So I should be able to bring it up to there. Add it. It's loading up. Okay, once you see the check mark, you're good to go. So now I can go back to that. And if you want to add that audio, it's just like inserting an image. Go to insert instead of image, go to audio. And it should bring you right to there. So just double click on it. And you'll see this little volume. Just move it wherever you want. And you should it should be able to work, even if even if not in, in presentation mode. That that to me is like Nick said with the, with the un with the take away the, take away the background is a huge deal for him. This one is a huge deal for me. So um, that is pretty much all I have. Like I said, a lot of the stuff I had were the same as Nick. So mine was not as long as Nick's. But again, just having the multiple slides for me seems to work best. And I, again, I already have a lot of Google Slides already made up, so it's easy for me to just to click and link those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing okay, and sure. see what we want to go from there. Yes. Do you want to talk about how you share yours to, to your students and to your parents, and then um, I can... I can share how I do it with my students and parents when data. Yeah, no problem. So I'll go ahead and share that again. I'll share the screen again. Okay. What I like to do is I like to just share 
my link straight on to whatever Google Classroom I have. So let's say where are we at? Okay. Go into one of my Google Classrooms. Let's just say I want to share it with my, my kindergartners. So I'll click on that and I'll go to here. From the way I've done it as I always would, would <clears throat> All right, so you click on the Google, you right click on it, copy link address. Okay, then I would go to my classroom, share something with your class, right click, paste, and, and post. And that's how, and I also, my school does Class Dojo, so I would use Class Dojo as well. I would link that onto there more for the parents. The Google Classroom is more students. The Class Dojo is more for the parents. So I would link both of them so I know I got both ends covered. So that's how I share it with my, with my students and their families. All right. Go, Nick, your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. So we are, our school district is not a Google district. And so my students don't know Google Slides. And um, our, our parents don't necessarily know Google that well. They don't know Google Drive. They don't know um, how to use Google Slides and how it takes you from slide to slide. So this, um, this was my virtual classroom that I sent out um, in, the, in the spring during the shutdown. And remember how I said that I put a ton of stuff on it. Um, just so students had lots of opportunities to to click on something and to take them um, to lots of different places. Um, so with my families in my district not being a, a Google district, I knew I couldn't share out a, a Google slide. Um, and so what I had to do is um, I figured it would be best to share out um, either through email or through the students clever page um, all of our students use they use clever um, I would share out a PDF and so the way I do that is you go to file and then you would download your Google slides as a PDF and so if I click there for PDF it's gonna hopefully download as a PDF and then when I share that PDF out to parents or to students, they can then um, open up the PDF and it's still clickable. All my links are still on there. So um, Andrew and I were on the same page with a lot of things. Um, even this little Bitmoji guy dunking um, in the spring, we just we wanted to expose kids to lots of different things, and so mine wasn't always doing an activity. So if they were to click on the, the dunking bitmoji, it took them automatically to um, a dunk contest from the 80s with Michael Jordan, okay? So um, I not only did I want them to be exposed to activities and things like that, I wanted them to know something that I like and things like that. So I'm gonna go back to that PDF real quick. I can find it. Um, so even though it was a it was a PDF, it, it's clickable. They can still hit all of the the links that are on there. I don't know why that's taking so long. Um, but the one thing the one thing about that is if if I plan on doing that this fall with students, if I plan on um, sending out a PDF, if I change the links on my Google slide, it does not update on the PDF itself. So basically you would have to send out a whole new um, PDF if you make changes to, to your links or things like that. So back at the beginning when I was talking about making things simple and maybe only putting one or two activities on there, um, it's gonna be less overwhelming for a student that sees something like this that's on the screen there. And then when I go and I change the activity, um, 
then I have less less to change and it's less work for me. Um, so that's how that's how we shared it with um, with parents is is we would download it as a PDF. We would share with parents through either email or through the kids is clever page. Um, that PDF, and so then they could they could click on it, and there's a lot of options. Now this year, our students are going to be using Seesaw, and so I'm still in the learning process of how I can uh, take my virtual classroom and embed it into Seesaw, and they they can click that way. I know it's it's possible. Um, I've started working on it. However, that's a whole different workshop, and that's a whole different time. Um, but if you do have questions for me on how to do that. Um, I can definitely um, walk through it with you and we can work on it together. That would be something that would be fine for me. Um, so with that, that is all I have. Um, Andrew, do you have anything else? Um, no, I just I was actually in the process of, of responding to a question about someone asked if students can rearrange your classroom. Um, it depends on how you share it. Me personally, I don't. I I wouldn't want students to be manipulating the classroom. Um, there are sites like Nick just said with Seesaw and Flipgrid where they can actually record themselves whatever activity you wanted them to do. They can record themselves and link it back to you. But as far as students actually manipulating the Google Classroom, I I don't. I I really wouldn't want them to do that. But it all depends on what you share it as. You can share it as everyone who has a link can edit it, or you can put as anyone who has the link can view it. So it just it depends on what you what you would like to do. So, um, but that's yeah, that's really all all I have as well. Um, you can find both of us on Twitter, um, and I'm just I'm going to give another shout out for for Twitter. The PE universe on Twitter is oh, yeah. uh, people. Put a question out there and it's almost answered within an hour all the time um another shout out to mark and becky fulmer for the cbhpe.org website if you have not been on that website please go everything is free um because people just want to share they want to share the amazing things that they've created the amazing um uh, Google Slides, the GIFs that are on there, the templates that are on there, the activities that are on there. Um, go to it, check it out. They, they've worked really, really hard um, on, on that website and building it for, for us, for educators. So um, you can find us if you have questions. Um, you can put it in the, the live chat there, and then we can look at it and we can respond later or um, we can put our information down as well and you can email us if you have any questions too so uh, actually nick there was one i just got a um a question saying can you link an assignment in google classroom to an image uh yes you can and i i did i had to do that for my summer my summer school i had to do a lot of reading links a lot of a lot of math links um i'll say see if i can i'm not sure if i archived that or not but let me um share the screen and kind of go through that real quick if we have i think we have enough time okay yeah, go ahead all right so let's see if i have i'm not sure if i archived it or not because i had some okay, here we go all right actually no it should be I want, I'm hoping some of the, some of my assignments that I made are still on here. No, actually, I'm not. But there is, sorry, I cannot, at the moment, I can't see it. No, Google Forms, excuse me, I was in the wrong, the wrong one. See if I can find it. Okay. Um, we'll go, yeah, a baseball one. So, trying to remember how I did this. It's been a while since I was so. So, you can go. No, that's not it. Darn it. There was, trying to think of the, 
I know there's a way to do it, but unfortunately, it's it's slipping my mind right now. Unfortunately, but I know I know there's a way. I I did it, but for some reason, I just cannot for the life of me remember how. I apologize for that. But there is there is a way to link, and I will I will do do a little more, and I'm sure within a, within probably the next day or so, I can. I can figure that out from how I had it, and I will somehow share that out. Um, but I apologize. I, there is a way. I just can't. Re- so I apologize for that. Andrew, I think what you can do is you can take your image, and I, if as long as that document is in your drive, if you oh, yes. if, yeah. if you link the the address from your drive onto that image, it, it should it should pull up that document. I you know, I, I think you're right. Let me try that real quick. All right, so I'm just going to link it to my Bitmoji character here. All right. So then you would just paste in the address from yes. your, your document there. Correct, yes. Then it should be just like any other hit apply and you should be good to go. Yes. So yep, I, yep, that's definitely it. Okay. All right, Bill, that's all we have. Thanks everybody. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, Like I said, we'll try to kick out content uh, every week. Uh, On our YouTube channel, if you're not subscribed yet, please make sure you hit that subscribe, and then that way you'll be able to see content. If you want a reminder, there's a little bell button you could hit, and that will remind you or tell you when we're going live or if we have content up here. Uh, Also, um, you can sign up for a free membership on the iaford.org website and get into the webinar section there and look at the free videos that we have there if you do a paid membership. Like I said, we'll have uh, professional development hours we'll be offering, as well as other webinars and other content. Thank you all for joining us on our first live broadcast. Our next live broadcast is going to be August 30th, uh, but you'll be getting out more information from week to week on the different videos and things that we have coming out. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, Feel free to keep commenting, and we'll answer back to you. And we're out.